is uh, Susan Rogers, and it's always a hard decision when to leave. Uh, we can always wait a few minutes, but I think Susan's going to tell us maybe not. So let's go, Susan. You got 10 minutes. Unmute yourself. Okay, there we try again. Once I lose, start sharing the screen, I lose the ability to mute myself. Here we go. Okay. So leaving early helps keep you safe. And uh, this is excerpted, this little presentation here is excerpted from the public presentations that I did last year on behalf of the Fire Safe Council and uh, the county OES office. And I gave these at various service clubs around town and Kiwanis and Rotary and that sort of thing. So the key to saving yourself and your family is, as Bob mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, personal responsibility, learning what you need to do and doing it ahead of time, which means right now, and not expecting the government to save you. Um, so there are just some people who will think, well, the firemen will come or the sheriffs will come. There aren't enough of those folks to go around to every house. And this is something that everybody just really needs to understand. Practicing the go bag, and your go plan. Practicing is something that most of us don't do, but firefighters train every week. They train every month, all year, and the least you can do is practice once a year and pretend you're evacuating. Pack the car and see how long it takes because generally you'll find it takes longer than you think it's going to. Practice helps you feel in control and less afraid. It'll become more automatic. You'll have muscle memory as well as just regular memory memory. And remember your brain's gonna be kind of fried and freaked out if you're actually evacuating. So you wanna make it as automatic as possible. And practicing is even more important when your household includes children or elderly, disabled people, animals, anybody who will cause you longer to get out is more reason to practice ahead of time. I think it was Matt mentioned this, the easy part, uh, of really any part of this is keeping your gas tank at least half full during the fire season. Half full is the new empty. When it gets to half, you go to the fire station. You don't wanna wait in line at the gas station before getting on the road and you really don't wanna run out of gas while creeping along in traffic and then have to abandon your car. If the fire is anywhere near you that you can tell, you wanna be ready to leave and don't wait to be told. Red flag warnings are the wind warnings that we all know about, I think. Your go bag should be in the car if you get an advanced red flag warning. For me, if the fire's anywhere within 30 miles and I'm gonna be listening to the radio and checking the websites and I've got a hand, we've got a handout on this that I'll show you in a minute um, to see if you can figure out where's the fire. Always keep your phone charged and don't, don't be going to Facebook and Nevada County peeps and that kind of thing to try and figure stuff out. There are official websites that will have information. Even the OES Facebook page is okay, but not just any old other social media page. To me, and I think the firemen would agree with me, when there's a breeze, all bets are off because fire creates its own wind as it consumes oxygen. And then when you add weather wind to it, that really amplifies the destruction. And uh, weather-caused winds drove the mass destruction that we saw in those massive fires in Santa Rosa and in Paradise. As Matt mentioned, law enforcement really doesn't want you to take your RV or fifth wheeler in an evacuation because it takes up road space. It's not easily maneuverable. There will not be turnarounds. If they've got to turn around the traffic because of a shift in the fire, mm, and so only, only if it's the only vehicle available to you. And again, as, as Matt said, consider storing your RV down the hill during fire season if you feel like you need to have it as backup for living in case your house burns down. The hardest part of making yourself leave is when you don't know what'll happen. And so here's what goes through your head. How bad is the fire? Is it coming this way? Are they putting it out? It's a lot of work to load the cars we would just have to unload them again if we didn't really have to leave. Maybe if we wait, we'll find out it's not coming this way. This is the pretty much the standard thought pattern when you hear that there is a fire, right? Okay, leaving early can be the difference between life and death. 
Leaving early can be the difference between life and death. This is the 101 freeway in Thousand Oaks. If you were driving from here on the 101 to LA, you've, you've been there. Leaving early can be the difference between life and death. And what is the point we want you to understand here? When I do this at public presentations, when I get to this point, I click the thing and I wave my arms and I say, everybody all together, one, two, three, and everybody joins in with me to say, leaving early can be the difference between life and death. And here is the photo of cars lined up trying to get out from the campfire. One, a uh, couple of other things we need you to understand that living in Nevada County means you are choosing to live with high risk. If you don't wanna live with this high risk and all of this stuff, you know, maybe you need to think about moving somewhere else. But the fact that you are staying and choosing to live here and continue living here means that you need to accept the responsibility that comes with that. And the other thing to understand is that if you wait until you are told to evacuate, that means others have been told to, and you'll all be on the road at the same time, trying to get out on the same on ramps, the same routes, and that sort of thing. Here's last, just last year, Sacramento Bee article, wildfire evacuations turning into deadly traffic jams. About 350,000 Californians live with high route wildfire risk and the same number of S exits and evacuation routes per person as paradise or even fewer. And then it said further down in the article, the Western edge is full of area, Western Sierra, low no, lots of areas with a low number of evacuation routes for the population there, including Nevada City in Nevada County, far worse than average. I don't know why they included just Nevada City and not Grass Valley too, but this, I think everybody would agree, this speaks for the whole area, far worse than average ratio than paradise. So, I found out once I started presenting this that people started asking, okay, I'm buying into this idea that I'm going to leave early before I get any kind of warning. But then they want to know how do they find out if something's happening that will help them decide to leave early. And that's on the handout I'm going to show you in a minute. But basically, you need to be alert on all hot days, keep a radio on, KVMR, or during the daytime, KNCO, look outside, listen for those airplanes, smell the air. The county calls this situational awareness, which is the fancy word for pay attention to what's going on outside. Create a buddy system in the county handbook, the, which is really excellent. I hope you're all looking at it. It's called Find Your Five, a group of five, four or five friends who will call each other with a heads up. If they hear about something, they're gonna call, you know, just let your buddy system know, hey, there's something happening up here and some other things called 211. 211 is connecting point. It's a county supported s system for getting information. You never want to call 911 to find out what's going on. 911 is only for reporting an emergency that you can observe personally or that you are experiencing personally. You do not call them to find out stuff. Otherwise you'll jam up their lines. You call 211 or do these other things. It's much easier to decide to leave early if you know where you're going. And so really the secret to this is decide now where you're gonna go to hang out, sorry about that, for a few hours until you find out if it's a genuine actual widespread emergency, a fire that's gonna burn your house down, if it's still heading toward you, or if it's safe to go back. And I'd say if you have friends within 50 miles of here, call them tonight or tomorrow and ask if you can go to their house and hang out if anything happens and you, you guys want to bail out and, and just find out until you hear about the fire. So deciding where you'll go, last year at a public meeting, uh, Mark Buttron of the Grass Valley Fire Department said his family would go to the Roseville Mall. You could go to movie theaters and Walmart and whatnot. If the fire's south, we may all end up down in Yuba City or Marysville or up in Truckee. But think about how all of this has changed with the pandemic. Now we all have to figure out where are we going to go, and we need to decide that now and write it down, and we need to figure out how we're going to stay safe. It's a lot more complicated, which, which means it's a lot more important. So if we actually get a fire, threatening fire here, and you're doing this right, you will avoid sitting in potential mass evacuation traffic. 
you'll probably spend one or more times a year doing something spontaneous, like evacuating early, but you plan for it in advance. And if we're lucky, we'll all come home safe and we'll be glad to unpack our cars into our not burnt out homes. And like, like Matt said, we're not gonna be saying to ourselves, geez, I didn't have to go. They made me go where they made me think I had to go and, and I didn't really have to go. You know, just don't say that. Everybody's doing their best to try and keep us all safe. The Red Cross will set up shelters in a real emergency, but that assumes a large evacuation and it's better, especially when you have limited routes, if you leave early before the warning, the order is even called. A warning in is in advance, an evacuation order means leave now, don't stop for anything. So be safe, not sorry, decide now where you'll hang out for a few hours while awaiting news. You don't wanna be one of these. North, south, east, or west, write it into your plans, tell family, know how to be aware, and leave before you are told to go. That's basically the summary here. Thanks for coming and doing your part. You can put your questions about this in the chat box, and I'm gonna show you one more thing. Next month's meeting, the county has a dashboard, which they just launched a couple of weeks ago. Paul will refer to this briefly, but we're planning to make a demonstration of this, the, a feature of our September meeting. And it looks like this. It will only be activated in a major incident when the county activates its emergency operations center at the Rood Center. So in other words, if it's big enough to open up the EOC at the Rood Center, that's when this will, will come into play for their incident dashboard where they have all kinds of cool stuff, but there's other neat things on here and this will all demonstrated, be demonstrated to you at our September meeting. And I forgot to show this, just this is, I already put this in the chat box and it's on the website, but this is where you get your early warning alerts about weather data and where you can look for that. And this section right here is how to stay informed about actual emergencies with the radio stations, the internet places you can go, where you can sign up for breaking news texts from either the sheriff or the union, Twitter accounts because the, the CAL FIRE and OES will be using their Twitter accounts. And again, 211 connecting point. So that is in, uh, that's available to everybody. And that's definitely something that you want to print out. And all you Firewise community reps, you're going to want to make sure that all your residents know about that. Go ahead, Bob. Okay, thank, you. thank you very much, Susan. I appreciate it. And uh, it's, it's the hardest thing to do is to decide when to leave.